In today's tutorial, we are going to be making this super sick map animation, which is a little bit more advanced than usual, but the setup is really nice and can be used across multiple different projects if you are working with the 3D camera. So essentially, a better way to use the 3D camera and then a super sick map animation on top of that. But without further ado, let's hop straight into After Effects, where I already have a composition set up, 1920 by 1080 24 frames per second to keep it nice and easy. I'm gonna start off by dragging my map in, into my composition here. And this one is a super high map. As per usual, you can get the project file on my Patreon if you want to, patreon.com forward slash my poll, or click the link in the description to get access to all the project files from the tutorials. But we have this super nice big map, which is 9,786 by 6,309 pixels. So a lot of room to play with, and that is super important when we make this animation because we need that space to work with. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually pre-compose this because we wanna play around with it and add some details to it before we add the animation to it. So if I hit Shift Command C to pre-compose it, and I'm just gonna name this Map Pre, and I wanna leave all attributions in map animation so that we just get a new composition and it'll be the size of the map. And we wanna make sure that we drag that into the pre folder, of course. Next, we wanna add a little bit of detail elements to this. I've prepared a couple of assets that I've found uh, online, pixels, whatever you wanna use, you can get it there. But I have these sailboats that I've just cut out in Photoshop that we are gonna be adding. Before we do that though, I'm gonna turn the layers into 3D so we can place them and get a little bit more depth in our scene. Once that is placed, you wanna make sure that you have classic 3D renderer selected. If you don't see this little tab here, you can always hit Command K to bring up your composition settings, then go to 3D renderer, and then pick the classic 3D over the advanced or cinema 4D. This is just gonna let us get some depth of field and just a little bit easier to work with, not as intensive. And we don't need any of the features in those two renderers. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is open the two view mode down here, and I'm just gonna select two views, and in this case, I might wanna do a custom view by hitting custom view one. And it's just gonna be a little bit easier to orbit around and then we can kind of see, okay, how does everything look in, pro in proportion to one another? So I'm gonna start by taking this little guy and we're of course gonna put him in an ocean somewhere. Let's just put him over here somewhere. So I'm just gonna scale him down and I'm gonna move it over into this ocean over here. And then we are gonna hit all to bring up the rotation. And then we can rotate his position and we'll set that to 90 in the X rotation. So kind of just like he's floating underwater. This is where the two view mode really helps because we can easily see that he's underwater and we don't want him to sink just yet. So we can just drag him up until he is right above the waters. So it kind of looks like he is, well, sailing in the ocean. We can rotate this a little bit just to make sure that it looks pretty good and that we have him up far enough. So I think that looks pretty good. And then we can just duplicate this guy a couple of times and move him around a little bit to get just a little bit of a cooler look. Maybe look at, maybe make it look like a little bit of a fleet. And you can always do different versions, but for the sake of the tutorial, we're just gonna keep it nice and easy and just use the same guy here. And I'm just gonna spread him out just a little bit so we can get some more depth later on when we add the camera and some depth of field. But I think four boats is pretty good. So we'll keep it like that. We might even take these layers and then use something like motion tools to move the anchor point down to the bottom of this so that we can scale it just a little bit easier. So now if we hit S on the layers over here and scale it down, we can scale them and just make it a little bit smaller to look a little bit more proportionate. That's the first step of this, but you know, I'm a sucker for clouds, so we're gonna add a couple of those in as well. I found these various places, I think Texture Labs and whatnot, but I've got some really nice thick clouds here. And again, we wanna make sure that we enable the 3D on them and scale them down. And let's move around a little bit over here and scale it down maybe to 30, maybe a little bit less. Let's do 20. And then again, hit all to rotate and 90 degrees in the X axis. And we're gonna drag them up. And here again, super nice that we have the custom view so we can just rotate it a little bit and make sure that it actually looks like these clouds are kind of floating in the sky above. And we can just add a couple of different clouds that we think look really nice and scale it down to 20, move it over this way, enable 3D and rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis and move it up. And again, we wanna make sure that we create a little bit of depth. So maybe this one will move back a little bit over this way so it's kind of behind this one boat. And this is one thing that really helps sell the animation is creating some depth in this part of the tutorial. So now we have a couple of clouds here, but I think it could look really sick if we gave it just a little bit more movement or a little bit more of a dynamic place. So I've also got a building. Now in this case, it's a building from Dubai, which you know, it's 
not going to be anywhere close to where we are right now, but we can just place it there. I just thought it worked pretty well for something pretty cool. I'm going to scale it down and let's just put it over here somewhere and then enable 3D. And again, we can move the anchor point down to be at the bottom, which is just going to make it a little bit easier to place it on the map so that we can actually make sure that it has ground contact. And again, rotate it 90 degrees to get it to stand up and maybe put it over here somewhere in America, even though it doesn't really belong here. But now we've got at least a little map here that looks pretty cool. We've got a couple of different elements here and it kind of looks like they're sailing towards it. Last thing we want to do is just add a couple of shape elements. I'm going to take a shape up here. I'm going to select the ellipse, make sure I have a stroke selected. It can be white for now. And let's just start it over here. And then we are going to change the color to maybe a nice red color and increase the stroke of it just a little bit like that. And then we can change the blending mode to multiply. And then we can also enable 3D for this. And then in this case, all I want to do is just lift it off the ground ever so slightly just to get a little bit of depth. And I think that looks pretty good. And maybe even just a little bit more here. And we can also add a stroke as well to kind of signify the route that it will be taken. So we hit G to bring up the pen tool. We can start it right over here and then go all the way over to our building, which is over here. So we get a nice little curve going up here. And again, change the blending mode to something like multiply, enable 3D. And then if you hit R to rotate it, you can rotate it 90 degrees, just like we did with everything else, just to make it stand up. And then we wanna make sure that we place it in its actual correct spot, right about here, and then maybe drag it down a little bit to move this anchor point. And it's just gonna look super cool just to have that little bit of detail element in there. And that is pretty much all we're gonna do for this in terms of laying out the elements. If I hit U to hide everything, you can take these boats and let's just add some position keyframes to them. So right at the beginning, let's just keyframe the position and let's move them back a little bit. So they all start roughly in the same place over here from the coast, that is pretty good. And then we can move forward to, let's just go to 10 seconds and then move them all over this way. You can add some easing to this. We're just gonna keep it super simple and just have them be linear keyframes. You can even move them around a little bit. So let's say we move this layer up a little bit and move that one this way a little bit, just to get a little bit of variation in where they're gonna be on the screen, uh, which will just help it look a little bit nicer. Let's also add a scale animation to this one. So we are just gonna go to about 12 frames and keyframe the scale and move back to the beginning and just make sure you put that to zero we can add a little bit of sexy speed to it just to give it a little bit of a scale animation like it's you see that flashing up right there just looks super neat super simple and you can add a trim pulse to the shape layer up here so if you add a trim pulse right here and this might help if we open two view mode we can then go and see that the path is right here let's open up the trim pulse set that to zero and keyframe that and then at the very end Let's set that to 100. I might even take one of these clouds and duplicate it and just move it over to our tower over here and maybe move it behind the tower, which will just give it just a little bit more of an interesting look. Now we're just gonna add a little bit of movement to the clouds. It's gonna be super simple. We're gonna drive it all with the wiggle expression just to make it super nice and easy. So just hit P on any of the clouds, alt click the position and then add a wiggle expression. And let's just do a 0.5 comma 10 maybe will work pretty fine and then that's just going to give it just a little bit of movement there might even increase that a little bit to be 20 right click on the position copy expression only select all our clouds and just hit command v to paste that same expression onto the position so that is pretty much it for designing the map and adding all the elements and you want to do all that stuff in this pre-comp just to make it a little bit easier on yourself now we can go back into our main composition where we have our map set up we want to first turn this into a 3d layer and then we want to make sure that we enable continuously rasterize or collapse transformations that's just going to give us that depth that we want and that we worked on in the previous composition next thing is to add a camera so we're going to right click and go to new and then add a camera now, we're just gonna do a standard 50 millimeter camera, nice and simple, nothing to worry about there. Only thing I'm gonna do is search for depth of field and turn it off while we work. Now, this next step is where the advanced bit comes in. We wanna start by taking our map and we wanna place our focal point or the main point of where our map animation is gonna evolve around. We wanna place that in the middle of our composition. So you can hit Alt and your apostrophe to bring up the grid. And then you just wanna place the map to be roughly in the middle of where, like kind of the middle of the screen. So the middle of my, scene is right there that looks pretty good 
The reason we're gonna do this is because we are gonna use some nulls to make controlling the camera a little bit easier. If you've ever worked with the camera in After Effects, you know it can be a bit tedious, especially with rotating, since it works a little bit weird. If we put 2 view mode on, you can kind of see that the way the camera works natively in After Effects is if you rotate it using the position, it revolves around the point of control and the rotation doesn't, it's kind of all different. So it's a little bit difficult to work with. So we are gonna be using some nulls to make it a lot easier for ourselves. So we are gonna right click and create a new null. And this is why we wanna make sure that the map is centered because this is gonna be our focal point of how the camera works. So we are gonna enable 3D for this null as well. And we'll just make three nulls. And the first one we're gonna name X rotation controller. And then we're gonna name one Y rotation controller and the last one we'll name z rotation controller i also add a position controller so we're just going to duplicate one of these and name this position controller this is just going to be a little bit easier to navigate the camera this way and so we don't have to worry too much about how to control it and play around with how tedious it can be so we're going to take this camera and we're going to pick whip it to the position controller and then we are going to pick whip the position controller to the X rotation, the X rotation to the Y rotation, the Y rotation to the Z rotation. So now if I open up the rotation for these three, we're just gonna be working with one parameter of each. So for this one, we're just gonna work with the X rotation. So you can see right here, it just goes around the null instead of having the camera be all weird and the same with the Y rotation and the same with the Z rotation. So essentially just an easier way of controlling it. And then we of course have the position controller to play around with the position of where everything is supposed to be. So just a bit more of an advanced way to set up the camera, but it's gonna make it a lot easier when you animate. So what we're gonna do here is just add a little bit of camera movement, make it super simple. I'm gonna keyframe at the very beginning all the parameters that I'm gonna be working with. So the position for this one, the X rotation for this one, the Y rotation for this one, and the Z rotation for that one. Then I can just hit U to show all the keyframes that we're gonna need, and just so we don't have to get all those other parameters. But I'm gonna move this forward a little bit because I wanna start zoomed out a little bit more. So let's start at, let's move those to about one second and 12 frames. Move back, and I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so that we get a full view of the map. I think that looks pretty good. We get a nice, nice far view of the map and then it's gonna come in and right as it comes in, I might start tilting it already. And this is a simple trick of getting some smoother camera movement is to overlapping movements so that it's not one movement and then another one, but if you then stagger them and layer them in more interesting ways, you get something that looks a lot more dynamic. So we can take these rotations and move them forward to about here and go forward about a second. And then we're just gonna rotate this map a little bit. So let's flatten it down a little bit, maybe even have this just a little bit more flat and you can rotate it a little bit. Let's do some Z rotation over this way. Actually, let's do it the other way, right about here and maybe move the position a little bit, move it over that way so we can kind of see what's going on here. So as of right now, we've got this little animation that comes down, zooms in and kind of rotates around here. Might even move these over just a little bit more and drag them out so that it's a little bit more of a fluid motion. Line that up so that we come in, starts rotating a little bit and then moves down into seeing that perspective. And we're gonna move forward a little bit and then we can rotate it a little bit, maybe go a little bit further down to really get a really good side profile and then rotate that around and then move this camera over a little bit. And let's just end it right there, maybe up ever so slightly so that we just get the top of this tower. And we're just gonna drag these out a little bit so that it kind of follows the boats a little bit. And you see the line up there, which just looks super cool, just a nice little detail element. And that is pretty much all you have to do for this animation. I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You just have a nice little movement coming in here. Next step is to add some depth of field to really spice this up. So now to add a little bit of depth of field, I'm gonna go into the camera and search for depth of field and turn it back on. And I'm just gonna go to the very beginning and I wanna zoom out a little bit and I wanna make sure I have the camera selected so that I can see where the focus distance is. And I'm just gonna click the arrow once again, and then we are gonna keyframe the focus distance. If you go to the left view, it might be a little bit easier to see it all, but essentially what I'm gonna do is take this and move it all the way to be right on our map. And that is quite far away. And then we can move forward to, let's say this point right here. And we just wanna make sure that the focus distance comes back down to be right on our mark. And in scenarios like this, where we don't have a super amount of depth, 
we can always increase the aperture to get a lot more depth of field. So right now it's at 25. I usually set it to something like 200, 250, and it's just gonna give us a lot more depth of field, especially when we are up close to something. So you can see right here, it's a lot nicer looking than 25. You can even go crazier, you can go something like 300 for a really exaggerated, almost macro look. And again, it's just about going around in this and just moving the anchor or the depth of field to be roughly where you want it in terms of where your animation's at and have that end right there. Move it a little bit closer and you can always use this over here to kind of line up. If you color code it, it'll be a lot easier to navigate, but it just gives you just a little bit of that depth of field that just looks super nice. I even like just adding a little bit of motion to it as well by just making it a little bit out of focus in the beginning and then it snaps back into focus as it comes down just looks super neat and that just gives us a nice little bit of motion. Then you can add some extra sauce, like, you know, a little bit of posterized time to it, just to spice it up a little bit. You can add a background, it's just a very simple background, maybe it could be very nice, maybe do like a tan color like they have here and move that in the background, just so it's not, you know, a, a transparent background, unless that's kind of a look you're going for. Uh, maybe even a little bit darker or lighter actually, I think looks better like that. You can really get creative with it and do kind of whatever it is that you are wanting to do. It's really just your creativity that is the limit for something like this. I think in general, keeping it pretty simple, pretty clean is gonna help a lot. You can always, since we are working with the classic 3D, you can always add something like motion blur to it as well. It's gonna give it just a little bit of extra movement to make it feel a little bit more realistic. Just enable motion blur for all these layers. Anyways, that is it for this tutorial. Just a nice little advanced camera 3D setup type thing. Pretty simple, but uses some more advanced techniques if you could call it by parenting and creating nulls. Super useful in the future. As always, you can get this project file on my Patreon if you are interested in it. With that being said, I just wanna say thank you. Hopefully you learned something new and uh, I'll see you again next week. Peace out.